स्पीक इन इंग्लिश लेकिन बीच बीच में इफ नेसेसरी आई शल मूव टू हिंदी देखिए देर आर टू क्वाइट डिस्टिंग पैराडाइम्स मॉडल्स ऑफ एजुकेशन वन इज अ डेमोक्रेटिक पैराडाइम ऑफ एजुकेशन और दूसरा है अ कैपिटलिस्ट पैराडाइम ऑफ एजुकेशन दीज आर कम्प्लीटली डिफरेंट थिंग्स एज आई वुड ट्राई एंड एक्सप्लेन टू यू द डेमोक्रेटिक पैराडाइम ऑफ एजुकेशन इम्प्लाइज दैट देयर हैज़ टू बी एन इक्वालिटी ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटी हर एक के लिए एक अपॉर्चुनिटी होना चाहिए टू गेट एजुकेटेड इनफैक्ट उसमें ऐसा है कि इट हैज़ टू बी मैथ एजुकेशन हर एक के लिए एजुकेशन फैसिलिटीज होनी चाहिए सो अ डेमोक्रेटिक पैराडाइम ऑफ एजुकेशन इम्प्लाइज मैथ एजुकेशन इट इम्प्लाइज एजुकेशन दैट इज फ्री क्योंकि इफ एजुकेशन फॉर एजुकेशन यू हैव टू पे मनी in that case an inequality has been introduced which is wrong so the democratic paradigm must mean that it is free education it is mass education and therefore it is education that is publicly funded that is state funded obviously agar free education milna hai to free education to sirf state ki taraf se diya ja sakta hai now this is a model of education which in our country we had believed in all these years जितना भी आप उससे डिविएट करें कम से कम इन टर्म्स ऑफ योर आइडियल दैट वाज द स्टेट ऑफ अफेयर्स इक्वालिटी अप इट हैज़ टू मैथ एजुकेशन बिकॉज यू हैव टू हैव इक्वालिटी ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटी डेमोक्रेसी का ये मतलब है इट्स एन एसेंशियल थिंग दैट देयर हैज़ टू बी एन इक्वालिटी ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटी इट इज़ अनदर थिंग दैट इन नो डेमोक्रेटिक सोसाइटी there has actually been equality of opportunity because in capitalism even in capitalism that is trying per force to dispense to 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 have an education system that is democratic jaise advanced countries mein hai they actually have at least to some extent a democratic system aap agar america jayenge wahan aap agar settle karenge to aapke yahan koi aayega गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से कहेगा कि आप अपने बच्चों को इस स्कूल में दाखिल करवाइए इफ यू डोंट देन यू आर फेलिंग इन योर ड्यूटी एज ए पेरेंट एंड दे वुड टेक द चाइल्ड अवे फ्रॉम यू इफ इफ नेसेसरी सेइंग दैट यू आर नॉट गुड इनफ टू बी पेरेंट्स सो इवन इन एडवांस कैपिटलिस्ट कंट्रीज इट इज द केस दैट अ कंप्लीटली कैपिटलिस्ट मॉडल ऑफ एजुकेशन हैज नॉट बीन इंट्रोड्यूस वॉट यू हैव हैड इज थ्रू द स्ट्रगल ऑफ पीपल द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ फेयरली सिग्निफिकेंट एलिमेंट्स ऑफ डेमोक्रेटिक एजुकेशन हमारे यहाँ दैट वॉज रियली द ऑब्जेक्टिव एट इंडिपेंडेंस दैट वॉज द मॉडल दैट वी वर एक्चुअली एमिंग फॉर दैट देर हैज टू बी स्टेट फंडेड एजुकेशन देर हैज टू बी फ्री एजुकेशन एंड एजुकेशनल अपॉर्चुनिटीज मस्ट बी ओपन टू एवरी बॉडी एवरी पर्सन चाइल्ड मस्ट एक्चुअली हैव द एक्सेस टू एजुकेशन नाउ दिस वॉज ऑफ कोर्स समथिंग विच वॉज नेवर एक्चुअली फुलफिल्ड because we didn't have enough schools we didn't have enough school buildings we didn't have enough teachers and so on the facilities were not there so you did not actually have universal education but on the other and it was very limited but on the other hand that was the ideal the model the paradigm that we worked with was a democratic education now what we have is very consciously a different paradigm and that is capitalist education capitalism knows that every educated person cannot be provided with employment because we are having jobless growth we are having massive unemployment problem and therefore the idea of actually giving education to everybody is something which is never a capitalist idea the idea is actually to give training not education but to give training to a certain number of people who would then fulfill the requirements of the system कैपिटलिज्म को इतने इंजीनियर्स चाहिए आपके सिस्टम को इतने अकाउंटेंट्स चाहिए सो दैट इज द काइंड ऑफ ऑब्जेक्टिव दैट द एजुकेशन सिस्टम हैज दे आर फॉर द आइडिया ऑफ एजुकेशन फॉर एवरीबॉडी एंड द आइडिया ऑफ एजुकेशन एज अपोज टू ट्रेनिंग इज समथिंग व्हिच इज 
given the go by that basically the capitalist system does not really look at at least in countries like ours does not really look at providing education for everybody and it certainly does not look at providing education that is genuine education as opposed to training now i believe that the new education policy is the first document that explicitly articulates a capitalist model of education why do i say that because if you look at the new education policy firstly there is unashamedly the effort to privatize education now if you privatize education then the private persons who sell education don't do that for a song they don't do that free it is i should draw a distinction here between private education and charitable education you see you actually had charitable trusts and so on which ran education systems education institutions that's a separate thing but if we are talking about private education privatized education then we are talking about education as a business now if education is as a business someone is running it as a business then that person is not going to make it free that person would actually charge a substantial amount of fees which is actually the case here i once made a comparison of the fees charged let us say by ashoka university which is just next to delhi and the fees charged let's say in harvard university which is a private university in america the amount of fees charged in harvard education university relative to the per capita income in the united states is actually much less than the amount of fees <coughs> charged in ashoka university relative to the average income of this country that means our education systems our private education institutions are pitched very high in terms of their fees their whole idea is to exclude and of course if it is the case that you privatize education and private education excludes people then fundamentally you moved away from the objective from the target of mass education therefore the question of equality of opportunity simply does not arise and what is more in order to camouflage this in order to hide this the new education policy has a number of clauses that at different points in your school journey the your your progress towards the school final exams you can actually branch off you can you can actually take all kinds of uh, uh, things like you know vocational education there's a vocational route and so on which basically means that you don't have to complete even your high secondary that everybody is not even required to or supposed to complete even the school level of education similarly when you look at undergraduate there's a four year undergraduate program which was introduced in delhi university and scrapped now that has been brought back and in the four year education pro uh, uh, undergraduate program after one year you can discontinue and you get a certificate after two years you can discontinue and you get a diploma in other words the encouragement is there at every stage to exclude for people to discontinue and the consolation they will give you a piece of a, a piece of paper called a certificate so at every level the idea is not that the student should be encouraged to go forward but the idea is that the student should actually be allowed to drop out but under the cover of some kind of a certificate some kind of a diploma and so on and so forth now such a person imagine a person who joins delhi university and drops out after one year with a certificate now that person has had no experience of college life no experience i mean it's not even as if it's a one year course he has dropped out in the middle of a four year course which means doesn't even have a complete exposure to any kind of a systematic teaching and therefore that is just nothing that's that's no education so the capitalist education paradigm that we have its idea is to exclude people its idea is that the majority of people should not be getting education only some people 
who are required as personnel to be employed in capitalist firms, to be employed in multinational firms, would actually get training and that training would pass as higher education. Personally, I do not believe that a person who may be an IIT graduate but is communal in his mindset is at all educated. In other words, education implies not just proficiency in training, education implies a whole set of ideas and attitudes towards society, which a democratic society requires its intellectuals to have. Now that is something which our education system from now on would not be providing. So the first thing is exclusion. And in this exclusion, when you say this, then they would say, no, 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 we have all kinds of facilities, you can take student loans. In America, there's a huge student loan crisis. Why? Because even in America, people who take student loans to study, unless you're assured of employment at the end of it, there is no way you can pay back the loan. Therefore, you may have taken the loan by, let us say, mortgaging uh, 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 your father's land or some such thing. And at the end of it, you would become landless, but there would be not even a job for you. So you become jobless as well as landless. Now, that kind of fear would actually prevent people from taking student loans. And as you know, there is a big student loan crisis in America where this system was actually tried out. In fact, many progressive thinkers in America, including people like uh, Bernie Sanders, who was a presidential candidate, have actually been demanding that the student loan be written off. That those students who have studied in the education systems through loans, their loans should just be written off, because obviously you don't expect them to pay back. So first is exclusion. And this exclusion, no matter how you cover, this exclusion is one which is necessarily going to exclude the poor, exclude those with lower incomes, exclude those who are socially handicapped. Now, you know very well that already in the admission, in the ANU and elsewhere, the OBC and the SCST quota is not being fulfilled. And therefore, this is just a way of excluding students and this education policy makes that legitimate. It actually legitimizes exclusion but covers it up by talking about certificate, diplomas, vocational education and so on and so forth. The second thing about capitalist education is that, you know, when you talk about democratic education, if you are talking about a democratic, building a democratic society in our country, in that case, one of the first things that must happen is that the students must know the real history of our country. And what is the real history for one and a half centuries? We actually were under colonial rule. And the colonial rule basically meant that there were a huge amount of surplus that was typically sucked out of this country and so on. Therefore, you cannot understand the economy of this country. You cannot understand the predicament of this country without looking at the impact of colonialism on this country, without looking at the impact of imperialism on this country. Now, you look at the new education policy. What the new education policy says is that we are going to get branches of Harvard, Princeton, Oxford, Cambridge and so on in India. Now when you have branches of Harvard, Princeton and so on, they are not, you are not going to tell them that you teach imperialism here. They are going to say this is our syllabus and therefore the rest of the country would then begin to teach exactly what is taught in Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge and so on and so forth. Now, in Harvard, nobody has heard of Dada Bhai Nauruji. Nobody has heard of, let us say, the Indian freedom struggle. Nobody, nobody has heard of colonialism in the sense that they may have heard of colonialism, but they would not attribute the pains and travails of, of, of countries like India to the history of colonialism. Therefore, if you have a homogenization of education, then essentially, what you are having is a whitewashing of imperialism, a whitewashing of colonialism, a whitewashing of the history through which capitalism has impacted societies like ours. Now that is why, you know, this is an important point I'd like to stress before you. See, that is why 
the idea of having uniform syllabi between us and let's say the advanced capitalist countries the idea of having uniform criteria for judging our educational institutions and those in the advanced countries the idea of having uniform criteria to judge our academics with the criteria being used elsewhere is completely wrong is completely wrong because given our country given the kind of objective social objectives we have if our education system is going to promote those objectives then we have to have a different education system from what have prevails in britain or america and so on i gave you one example that in britain and america i i myself studied in britain nobody talks about colonialism nobody talks about the drain of wealth from india in fact if you mention this someone would say oh you're a loony left so so the point is that nobody and and that being the case you are more or less bulldozed into believing in a narrative where these things don't play a role where if india is underdeveloped that's because you having a very high population growth if india is on underdeveloped because indians are lazy for a very long time there used to be a theory that the chinese are opium eaters lazy people that's why china is underdeveloped nowadays i don't know what they have to say about china but anyway so so the thing is that if you have uniformity and likewise therefore when we say that look jnu is not figuring in the i mean many people i i find leaders and so on that indian institutions are not figuring in the top 200 in the world and lamenting that why just as well because you know i mean those 200 top institutions that list is prepared by somebody sitting in london or new york now we do not have to worry about what they think of our education system it's another thing that we of course must have a fine education system we must have our own criteria for judging whether you are having a good university or not a good university in fact one of the great things about jnu is that we never bothered about what other people are thinking about us but even so it actually got mentioned everywhere in the world as as a remarkable new kind of place but the thing is that therefore the idea is not to be bothered about what others are saying the idea is not to fall victim to other people's criteria and to try and meet those criteria but to actually develop your own system develop your own criteria and so on now this is a very common fa um, failing i'll give you an example which may appear very odd that you know we get so thrilled about let us say somebody getting a nobel prize now nobel prize is determined by them and as a result the fact that somebody doesn't get a nobel prize from here does not necessarily mean that the person is no good jagdish chandra bose in fact always had this feel i mean you know even his articles would get rejected by western journals but that doesn't mean that he was not very good you see so so you have to understand that there is no level playing field and in this in the absence of this level playing field if you pretend there is in that case you are falling victim to their criteria and if so then you would never strive for excellence now the capitalist paradigm of education capitalism doesn't say that we are imperialist capitalism doesn't say that imperialism explains india's misery it doesn't say that there was a drain of wealth from india therefore cap on the other hand capitalism wants homogenization that an engineer from india and an engineer from 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 america must be identically trained in which case you take the engineer from india who is much cheaper therefore capitalism encourages homogenization while a democratic education system must encourage creativity must encourage the specificity of the country's experience must encourage the fact that people in particular countries have their own ways of interpreting the world and changing it so we are now shifting from 
a, dem a, a democratic system. By shifting, I'm not saying that we were ever in a democratic system, but that was our social objective. We are actually shifting from a democratic paradigm of education, which was the objective ever since independence. When the Kotari Commission said 6% of GDP should be devoted to education, the idea was that this education would be mass education, that it would be universalized. So we are shifting from a social objective of mass education to uh, a situation where education is going to be capitalistically, capitalistically run, not only in institutions which are run by capitalist fact, run like capitalist factories, but also in a manner that actually fulfills the requirements of multinational capital. I mean, you know, of multinational corporations of global capitalism. So the idea is now that it will be capitalist institutions producing students for capitalist firms who are now going all over the world in, in, in uh, locating activities. So employment there. This has nothing to do, and, and that being the case, if X number of people can be employed, then X number of people should be trained. The fact that you may have millions of, of, of young men and women who don't have education is something that does not bother the capitalist education paradigm. Now that is exactly where we are moving to and the fact that it excludes, this exclusion is going to be covered up as I said through certificates and so on, is something which does not bother anyone. The last point I want to make is the following, that you see that, that uh, okay, we, we, one of the features of education when it is capitalistically run for the requirements of capitalism and in institutions which resemble capitalist factories. When that is the objective, in that case, education necessarily becomes a commodity. It becomes a commodity, as I mentioned, that you, know, you have uniformity of syllabus, you have homogeneity. Now, if you have a commodity, the, the thing about a commodity is that it's a nice packaged thing. The nicer it is packaged, the more attractive it is. And as a result, the commoditization of education necessarily implies giving people capsules of knowledge that you actually have, let us say, three, four things which are given as a capsule. But the purpose of education is not this doling out capsules. The purpose of education is not distributing capsules. The purpose of education is actually to make people think, to actually make students be critical. In fact, I, you know, what I'm saying, I'm not giving you a capsule, I, I, I want you to attack me. So the whole idea, when I go to a class, the whole idea that should be there is that the students must question you. That is when creativity begins. Therefore, the idea of a commodity is necessarily opposed to the idea of education as a creative activity, as something that opens up the minds of the students as well as the teachers to new ideas and unless you open up the mind there is no progress of knowledge and there is no progress of society so commoditization of education is really the destruction of knowledge the destruction of creativity and unfortunately our education system is now moving into a situation where there would be little creativity in the indian universities if somebody is creative, then that person would rather migrate to Harvard or something like that rather than stay here because after all, we have at the same syllabus as they are having or we have the same syllabus. That being the case, that person would like to take advantage of this in order to uh, uh, move to Harvard and so on and not be here. Therefore, the, the people left here would be, shall we say, second-rate clones of Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge and so on and there would be a complete destruction of creativity and the students instead of creatively engaging with the world around them would really be getting 
training would really be getting some skills would really be let's say mathematically well trained and so on and they would be getting knowledge in the form of capsules which is a, a, a form of commoditization therefore all this I see you know the old messy system of education we had okay there were all kinds of problems at least the objective was to develop a democratic paradigm of education but that paradigm is being abandoned instead what we are having is a capitalist paradigm of education and the purpose of the capitalist paradigm is actually to leave people uh, exclude large numbers of people you would remember that there was an interesting discussion between Gandhi and Tagore on the question of education when Gandhi asked students to leave universities and to join the people on the roads to, 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 to kind of join the movement Tagore wrote to him that look what are you saying because this is a country in which there are so few educated people and if those who are getting some education in, 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 in these universities are asked to abandon their current education in that case you are actually encouraging uneducatedness to that Gandhi's reply was interesting Gandhi's reply was that look I mean he was in a sense saying exactly the kind of thing I was trying to say earlier namely education is not a homogeneous thing that the education being given in the colonial universities is meant to train the colonial bureaucracy its whole purpose is to produce a mindset where you aspire to be a deputy magistrate or a deputy collector or some such thing not to be a person who critically engages with the reality around you the same thing can be said in Gramscian terms you see that that the idea is to produce idea of education system is to produce organic intellectuals of the people in a free country but on the other hand, the education system that we are now going to be having increasingly and that is now even the objective is to have organic intellectuals, not of the people, but of multinational corporations, international business, international finance capital. Therefore, I welcome the fact that all of you are really now raising this banner against the new education policy because I think this is part of a striking of a strike of, of, of a striving for a democratic society we know dem democracy is an attack in all kinds of areas and education is one area where there is an attack on the democratic paradigm so I would congratulate you on your struggle thank you very much